What's going on guys, so I'm going to show you advanced materials using Unreal Engine 4 and Crazy Bump. Last time I showed you how to do very basic materials, um, that was just using roughness maps and some colour maps. But today I'm going to show you sort of the, sort of the beginner's um, sort of guide to doing more advanced materials. This won't be like the best materials, but it will be a step up from the basic materials that I showed in the last video. I will do a small series on this to show progressively more and more steps to getting more advanced looking materials and just sort of adding new nodes to the node editor to make it look better. So I quickly whipped up four materials, um, about half an hour it took me, maybe less, I didn't really count. And um, as you can see I've got gold here, more of a dirty gold, so it still reflects, it's quite a good example here, it still reflects a lot, but it's got a lot of noise on it and stuff like that, because that's what gold does anyway, and it's got all of this crap on it to make it look like it's sort of been sitting there for a while. Then I got brick, and this brick looks better if I put a point light in. There you go. So you can see the actual normal maps being affected. So if I go here, you can see where it, the shade comes in to make it actually look like that's 3D when it's not. Then we got just a wood texture that I did. Pretty much. Um, nothing too special about that one. And then we got this was a, um, originally a plastic texture, but then messing around with it, adding some color to it, I made more of a pleather after a while um, I thought it came out quite nice and it's a good example that you can take any really texture and convert it into anything so I took a plastic texture and made it look more of a leather pleather material All right so this is our test dummy that we're going to make material from so first I need you to get crazy bump so if I go on here and load up chrome um, just right, crazy bump. I already have it installed. I'm just going to show you how to get it. crazy bump. Go there and just click download. It will come up and then just install it. Um, it's only a 30 day trial, so you can buy it. But I tend to just I got the 30 day trial, made loads of materials to be honest, and then I recently got it again because I wiped my computer, so I got another 30 day trial. All right, so get crazy bump up, and what you want to do is you want to get a material. And I'm going to be using a cobblestone material. You can use anything you want. Just make sure when you're looking for a material, you're writing seamless. The reason you want to do this, if I take this quick, if I copy that image and jump into Paint, I know Paint's not the best program, but it's just going to be an example. Quite a big material. If I connect that up, as you can see, it completely runs off. Now that looks like a new material. That's what seamless material does if you didn't know. But yeah, so you're going to want to type in seamless and you're going to want to try to find a material that's uh, 512 or 1024 or 2048 um, or even 256 if it's small. You just want a power of two material essentially. All right, so we're going to save this. I've already saved it onto my desktop, but just save it whatever. And then get the crazy bump and open it. And it's called. Oh, I just went past it. Got a lot of crap on my desktop. You go, load it up. And then it will ask you to sort of pick um, what it what it would look like. It's sometimes, it's usually very obvious, but sometimes it's a little bit more confusing. I think that one, if I try to save it here. First thing you want to do, or in my opinion anyway, is go into options and, oh, I've really got it turned off. So what this does, it looks better with it on. But what it is, is it's a displacement map, and I will not really be going over displacement maps because what a displacement map essentially does, it actually changes the shape of the object. And I'm just doing basic, so I'm doing advanced materials, but I don't want to go into displacement maps quite yet. All right, so just turn that off, and it'll go back to its normal shape. And um, then, first of all, mess around with your normal map. So you can turn that all the way down to make it, oh, I just inverted it basically just then. So you can turn it inverted, which looks really funky, but I don't want that. You can turn it really high up in the right direction. Whoops. And send it click the background. Um, and you can just fiddle with that, make it look a bit better. Um, pretty much this varies on the actual texture you've got. So like, I don't want it to be too sharp because I don't want the actual dirt particles or whatever to bump out. So I'm going to turn off the sharpen, put some news, redu news reduction, noise reduction on. Turn that down a little bit. I mean, what does it look like if it on? Mm, yeah. I don't want very fine detail 
all that much. I'll keep it to about there. Oh, I don't want it on minus though. Let's put that up maybe a little bit. Because as you can see, if I turn it high, oops, if I turn it really high, it just sharpens all of the sort of smaller things, and I don't really want that. All right, turn that up a little bit, and I want this to be up loads. I find that the um, very large it tends to curve anything with a normal on it. So if I turn that really low, as you can see, look, it's all really flat. It still looks a little bit 3D, but it's all really flat. So the more you turn that up, the more it tends to make it look like it's popping. But I do want the bricks to be slightly flattened at the tops. So I want it to be like, so sort of like that. All right, so as soon as you've got that, you can move on to your next map. We don't, we're not gonna be using a displacement map. So if you really want, you can turn that to zero. Then we're gonna go into occlusion. And um, I'm gonna say turn the power, wow. Um, turn the power down a little bit. Turn that down a little bit. And what the occlusion does, it just shades in. It, essentially what you want the occlusion to do on this map is be basically colored in anywhere in the gaps, but that's really hard to do unless you go into Photoshop and do it yourself. So that would be good enough. I apologize for the Skype sound if that came through. Um, then you want your specular map. Now, Unreal Engine 4 doesn't use a specular map. It uses a roughness map. And a roughness map, everything that's black is shiny and everything that's white is um, dull. Uh, but it's different for a specular map. A specular map, everything that's white, so if I turn the brightness to full, so as you can see, it looks really wet now. So everything that's white will be shiny, and I think that's, if I turn it all the way down, there you go, if I turn it to that, it'll be quite dull. Um, I'm going to want to make this so that I want the bricks themselves to be quite dull, but the bit in between to be a bit more bit more wet, bit more moist, so as if it sort of rained a few hours ago, but it's dried up a little bit since then. Um, so, try to get the brick to be black and the in-between to be white. So we've got like that. This is always easier if you do it like Photoshop, but I'm gonna. Sh I'm just showing how to do Crazy Bump today because it's a very quick way to do it. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of noise. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. Going to diffuse. Diffuse stay the same. You can actually like remove all the shading in the diffuse, which you should technically do. Actually, you should remove all the shadings. You can edit that later. But I always, but I always think it looks better with a bit of shading anyway. So. You can edit that as much as you want. This it sometimes makes things look better. Mm, don't really need that. Don't really want any color correction because it all needs to be a different color. I mean, it will try to make it all the same if I do that. And that's pretty much it. Um, that cut is coming along. It looks a bit more like it. I might put the 3D on a little bit more. But yeah, that's looking like it. Um, the gaps are wet. If you can see, here you go like that, you can see that it's like trying to reflect in those gaps. But then the bricks themselves don't really have much of a reflection. Right click by the way to uh, move the light around, If um, I didn't quite make that clear. But yep, and that's pretty much it. So what do you want to do? Don't want to displace the map, but just right click, save all textures. I think I saved them a second ago because I was doing a test. But I'll save them again. See I made a cobblestone file. And you wanna, oh, babin, you wanna save it as a targa, and I'll just resave them all because I've changed them a little bit since then. Does that replace them all? But yeah, you just wanna save them as targa and save them in a, all in a file for you. I'm gonna quickly delete them all and resave them just in case. I do apologize if Skype's going off. I will quickly mute it. There we go. All right, so. Table textures, um, cobblestone, and just save them all. And if you see here, oh, if you see here, they will appear. You don't want your displacement map. You can use the displacement map for other things, but I'm not going to show how to use it at the moment because it's a bit easier. All right, now I'm just going to move this to my um, other monitor. So get your program back up, create a new file, call it cobblestone texture test and get go into the file if you're not you get and drag some of them in so what we want to do is you just 
drag them straight in. Somebody's just got to hold your finger over it just in case, because it sort of doesn't register straight away. If it comes up that, then uh, that means your normal map has gone through correctly, so just click OK. Now we want to start making the actual material, so right click and material. We're going to call it cobble, oh, cobblestone material. Double click in there. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's a bit easier. All right, so um, to move around this menu, hold right click um, and just select all your materials in the outline that you just threw in from the folder and drag them straight into here. There you go. And we, you, all you got to do now is pretty much connect them all up. So we've got a base color, and we'll go to a flat plane because it'll be a bit warped on the sphere. So we've got a base color. Then we got, if I move some of these out of the way, then we got the normals. Whoa. And then we got our occlusion, ambient occlusion, which is just shading the gaps. And then, because I said earlier, um, UE4 uses a roughness map, not a specular map. We need to invert the map because black will be shiny. If I connect it up, it'll be a bit more easier to explain. Okay, so as you look, as you can see, that is super shiny on all the um, all the bricks or stones or whatever. So we could do is you need to invert it. Invert this. You could do it in Photoshop, or if you're right up here, one minus, and it will show you the shortcut. So if you hold O as well, but I'll drag it in, show you that one. And if you hold O on the keyboard and left click, it will put one in. And you just want to get this up, connect this in, and I'm going to, if you click here, we'll show you the map it's creating. As you can see, it's inverted all of it. Everything that was black on here has become white. Everything that's white has become black. And then connect that up to the roughness. As you can see, now everything in the gaps is really shiny as if it's sort of really wet. In fact, that might be a little bit too much. I mean, it looks all right at a distance, but I think that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to, um, what you can do now is use an overlay. So. You've got to type in over legs, there's no shortcut for it, I don't believe. And this is all personal preference. Personal preference. If your material looks fine with the roughness map you made, absolutely fine, just leave it at that. But I'm going to just be showing an example, like if you do have that problem. So, you've got your overlay, connect that at the bottom. And white is less shiny, so you want to hold one, left click, and you get your basic one value map and we just want to make that like 0.7 that'd be a bit grey drag it over and then drag that in and that should make that a little bit less shiny in the gaps yep and if we just click apply we'll drag that on and you've made pretty much a very basic uh, it's still an advanced texture, but uh, using basic nodes. I will have other videos to make it look more 3D using um, bump maps and offset maps and stuff like that. But for now, that is how you do sort of a basic texture. And not all textures need it, like gold doesn't need all those advanced maps because you can pretty much get gold quite easily just using roughness. Um, bricks, I don't know if I actually used it on this. It's a little bit messy. Yeah, I did. So that's a bump offset map, but I'll be showing that in another video. So, yep, so that is pretty much how you make very basic advanced textures. I hope that helped anyone that needed to know how. Um, like I said, I will be making more videos in the series to show you how to make more advanced text, make a advanced texture even more advanced. Um, once again, thank you very much for watching. Hope this helped anyone. If you do, if I showed something and you don't understand how I did it, just type it in the comments, um, you need help and I will just show quickly either in a video or I will um, just type it out if it's easy to explain. Thank you for watching and bye bye.